Fusel alcohol is higher ordered alcohols like um, propanol, butanol, pentanol, and then it kind of drops out. But these higher ordered alcohols, um, isobutanol a little bit, um, gives, th gives beers kind of like a whiskey taste. And if you ferment your beer real fast, and if you don't age it at all, um, beer will have a fusel alcohol taste, particularly high gravity beers. Yeah, particularly high gravity beers. So one of the things that I, I don't like about the casking uh, or the, the barrel aging is that part of what people like with that is the fusel alcohol taste. And what I don't like in beer is the fusel alcohol taste. So that, that's sort of a conundrum for me. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that in the future. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that's good, but a lot of that I don't really like. So if you age the beer on, on live yeast longer, the yeast take up the fusel alcohol and then re-metabolize it. And you get a little more alcohol out of it, but really what you do is you get that fusel alcohol taste out of the beer. Yeah. And then the other thing that people will tell us is that our beer doesn't give them a headache. And so they'll come here for growler fills and stuff, particularly women a lot of times. They'll come here for growler fills and stuff, and it's like, well, you know, I can actually enjoy a beer of yours and I don't get a migraine a half an hour later. Wow. And that's because we, um, we age the, the beer on the yeast long enough to take up compounds in the beer that are called histamines. So you, you've probably heard of antihistamines. Yes, sir. Well, you can actually, um, there's actually a lot of histamines that are made uh, when yeast is rapidly growing and fermenting. And the reason why histamines are made is histamines are compounds called polyamines. And they compact DNA during uh, yeast growth. So when, when one yeast cell goes to two yeast cells, their DNA has to be replicated into two copies. And then the, all that DNA has to be compacted into a small structure and then pulled apart. Um, the, hist the histamines, the polyamines, actually add to that. The problem, that's all great, and if it stayed in the yeast cell, it'd be fine, but every time yeast divides, it has a propensity for what's called apoptosis, or blowing up. So maybe one, one in 10 or one in 100 yeast cells will blow up as they're dividing, and they dump all their insides to the outside. So all the histamines in green beer is because the yeast was rapidly dividing. A lot of them blew up. There was all this crap in the beer, not inside the yeast cell. Now, if you simply age the yeast on the beer, much like lottery, mm. the yeast on, in the tank picks up all that for nutrient and then takes it out of the beer. And then when you filter the beer, you leave the yeast behind. And then you wind up with a beer like this where you can enjoy a pint or two, not be stuffy, not get a headache afterwards, and just sort of enjoy yourself and get up the next day and do your thing. So we have a lactic acid tank, so that's what that tank is. Oh, right. And um, so we do two types of fermentation at the brewery. We do lactic acid fermentation, and we do um, alcoholic fermentation. So most organisms actually do lactic acid fermentation. Like humans, you work out too hard and your muscles get stiff, oh, yeah. that's lactic acid fermentation, or lactic acid respiration. Um, and then um, alcoholic fermentation um, makes alcohol plus carbon dioxide whereas lactic acid fermentation makes lactic acid. Then in humans and other mammals, the lactic acid gets transported back to the liver. And then like two hours later, if you notice, you're usually still breathing sort of you know, a lot from exercising. That's because you're respiring lactic acid back up to glucose in the liver. Wow. And then it gets transported back, transported back to the muscle and then stored as glycogen, or stored as glycogen in the liver. So it's those sort of little things that, it's like, I don't know if that helps the beer at all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we do lactic acid fermentation there, then we take some of that lactic acid, then add it to the, at the end of the boil to the wort that we generate for the German style beers. And the reason why we do it like that is, um, and, and, and that, again, it's like a little trick of chemistry, is that when you add hops to wort in the beginning of the boil, the hops actually aren't bitter. They taste a little bitter and they have kind of a funky taste, but they don't taste like bitter hops that you associate with beer. They actually have to go through a conversion reaction. The conversion reaction is pH dependent. So there's um, pH scales where things are low pH, it's acidic, high pH is basic. It's a basic reaction that, that converts the hops from the sort of neutral tasting material to the bitter material. So if you dump the lactic acid in in the beginning of the boil, you actually slow that reaction down. And it wouldn't actually efficiently occur through the boil. You'd have to probably use about twice as many hops to get the same amount of bitterness. We um, add bittering hops at the beginning of the boil. Uh, the, the wort's a little bit acidic, or it's a little bit basic. Um, close to neutral, but it's, it's not that 
it's not that acidic. And then at the end of the boil, we add in some lactic acid. That reaction stops, but it's already gone to completion. And then the acid gives the beer more of a clean, uh, more of a clearing taste, and then also helps in sedimenting the trube in the bottom of the brew kettle. so much stuff on water and what people in town actually I think all over the country tend to do is that they they send their water through reverse osmosis to strip all the ions out and then they back blend with like 50% like street water and 50% like RO water right and, and I've seen that at brewery after brewery after brewery and um, and when you ask them more it's like well that kind of approximates kind of like mm, water and really what it is it's just a big game and the reason why it's a big game is because um, if you think the next step through it now, New York has pretty soft water, mm -hmm. um, but when you boil water on your stove and let it cool, you get a, what's called a precipitate in it. And the precipitate is what's called unstable carbonate. It's calcium carbonate in the water that precipitates to the bottom of the kettle or the pot or whatever. And so when you actually go through and look at why is your water so high in ionic strength, usually it's carbonate. And, um, and what happens when you boil the living snot out of the wort? all the unstable carbonate kind of drops to the bottom of the kettle along with the grain. So if you look at just sort of like what you're doing, you don't need to strip out all the ions and you know, blend back one with city water and all that. And in fact, the crappiest beer I've ever made is beer made from bottled water. At home, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Crappiest beer. It's like really weird tasting, kind of not sulfury, but not estery, but just sort of like funky tasting. And it wasn't because the yeast didn't ferment well or anything. And I did that a couple of times before I figured, screw this, yeah, nice. yeah. yeah, screw this. And there's no reason for me to make like a super hoppy IPA, you know, it's, it's just kind of crazy, you know, mm -hmm. and all it is is you're trying to compete with someone else mm -hmm. um, where you're not really bringing anything really new to the table. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple of subtleties in terms of the taste, but not really something in terms of um, uh, like a new sort of experience. It would be more of a refinement of an old experience. Yep. So we're trying to have people think malt. Like malt's an interesting flavor. Sure. And we've had like some pretty pretty wild hophead guys here where you know they discover the malty flavor and they're like, wow, you know, I really feel like I'm drinking new beer. <laughs> 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 or um, a couple of the brew clubs come in, like brew clubs are always like notorious for like being extremes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's like a guy from one of the brew clubs where he was like known as like the hop guy because he was like the super hop head of the super hoppy brew club. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they had like a meeting here one night and kind of enjoyed the beers, enjoyed some of, some of our beers. And you know, at the end of the night, the guy said, well, Jim, I can't really thank you enough because you know, I think I discovered malt. Mm -hmm. 